The Secret Service scrambling to explain their most stunning screw-up in decades. The woman who heads the agency says that changes are coming to Trump's security detail, but she accepts no fault for the attempt that left a would-be assassin being able to get within 130 yards of the former president. Biden's DHS chief, Mayorkas, was also out spinning over who's at fault for the deadly security breach. Watch. A direct line of sight uh, like that um, to the former president should not occur. Uh, that is precisely why President Biden directed that an independent review of the incident occur. We are going to uh, really study uh, the event independently and make recommendations to the Secret Service and to me so that we can assure the safety and security of our protectees, which is one of our most vital missions in the Secret Service, the Department of Homeland Security, and across the government. Mm. That is, we get new details on what went wrong. The building that the gunman was on was the staging area for the local police tactical team doing overwatch of the crowd. That's according to ABC. And the gunman gained roof access without a ladder. The FBI says they have gained access to the gunman's cell phone, but have not yet determined a potential motive. Biden caught up with reporters today who pressed him on his confidence in the Secret Service. You feel safe with your Secret Service people? Yes, I do. Do you still have faith in the Secret Service, Mr. President? Yes, I do. Wow. The fact that he hasn't fired her already, Judge Shinin, but the fact that she hasn't offered her resignation is stunning to me. You know, ordinary Americans with no experience in security, law enforcement, know that you can call it an outside perimeter, you can call it an inside perimeter, you could call it Mars, but it was 150 yards from the place where a former president was speaking and within a direct line of sight. And the truth is that if you, the, the Secret Service wants to blame the local police and you've got the local police acting like they did in Uvalde, apparently he went up and then he came down, we've got some issues. But you can't just say local police had that. You've got to do your own advance work. And it's the local DA. I had people who did advance work. How dangerous is it? How many people do we have to bring? And you know that there have been problems with the Secret Service. I mean, there, the Kamala is detailed. There were two of them who had a problem. We covered it a few months ago where a woman was hired uh, who had problems in the Dallas Police Department. You know, then the problem with prostitutes in other countries. I mean, there's a culture there that has to be addressed. And they need a leader who's going to take no prisoners. And they need someone unlike this woman. The night that there was an attempted assassination of a former president of the United States, she doesn't speak. The next day she shows up, Cheadle, the head of the Secret Service, she says, I'm not going to talk about it. Well, you need to talk about it. You deserve, uh, or we deserve answers. You owe us an answer. And in the end, how can we possibly believe that she is in a position with her agency to protect the president going forward when they failed on the last one and aren't even willing to address it? And Mayorkas, is, who was her boss, says, well, I don't know if anyone will be fired. That's because nobody gets fired on the left. They just keep going. And I want to talk about the guys on, the, on, the state, on this uh, area where the president was. The president popped up. He popped up too many times. If there was a second shooter, they would have had him. You know, there's a lot to talk about. But I want to talk about, finally, the Trump crowd. They were as resilient as Donald Trump. They didn't run. They didn't scatter. They didn't stampede. They started yelling, USA, USA. They learned this from Donald Trump. So now we're hearing this guy didn't gain access to the roof, Dana, with a ladder. That means he must have gotten inside the building somehow and just gotten to the roof. Just walk up the stairs and open yeah. the hatch. So how is he having access to that building if that's supposedly a, a tactical site for the locals? There are so many questions to be answered. And there's going to be a hearing next Monday starting um, that on, on the congressional side of things. I do wonder about Biden not at least calling her in to say, you, in my office right now. And at least even to say, I want to know what happened. Tell me more. But they don't do that. And I think that Mayorkas, because he has been saying for three years, the border is secure. No, it's like, I, I, I don't actually hear what he says when he talks. So I'll, the last thing I would say is most presidents will always defend the Secret Service. They have to have complete trust with the Secret Service. Mm -hmm. But Biden could have done that for Trump. Right. And for future presidents, and he should have. Greg Gutfeld. Yeah, uh, I think that agents... They're doing the best they can. Mm -hmm. You know, it's up to the investigators to decide whether uh, 
the people up top really screwed them up, screwed it up and screwed them over. You know, if Trump was short staffed or given the B or C squad, creating vulnerabilities, I don't have any idea. And I don't think it's a, a going to social media to finding those answers is a good thing. I think there might be some opportunity costs, as you see in every industry when it comes to DEI. When, you know, I don't mind DEI at Starbucks or DMV, <laughs> but at Secret Service, DEI, DIE. Right. You know, it's, uh, it, but having said that, that is not a testament. That's not a criticism of the agents. You can, you can have the bravest, most passionate agent fulfilling this dream to protect the president. It's, it's, it's no comment on their bravery. But, you know, it's Ty Tyrus once said to me, I can be your bodyguard, but you can't be mine. <laughs> you know, there's no way I could block a shot to Tyrus's head, chest, or even belt buckle. <laughs> so there's, so there's, there's, there's some things that you kind of have to, like, look at, and it's way above my pay grade. I think the Secret Service, they, they're brave. It's, it's mm -hmm. not about them. It's about what's above them. Mm -hmm. Jessica. So I was particularly taken with that interview that the BBC got, the incredible... Um, blind journalist who was interviewing the rally goer wearing the great uh, visor that has orange hair attached to it, who said, I saw him and I was yelling about it. And the reporting that's come out since then is that they knew that that particular building was a vulnerability. And I don't understand how you go forward with a rally knowing that something within sniper range uh, is a vulnerability. On the DEI front, I mean, she's a 27-year veteran of the Secret Service. We need to hear from her. We need to really understand what happened there. But the, snipe, the Secret Service sniper who didn't shoot him at first but then did end up shooting him was a man. And the local cop who climbed up and then didn't do anything was also a man. So I'm not sure. Oh. He did. He, that guy didn't, didn't, didn't do anything. Well, he ducked because he was going to get shot and he rushed the guy. But you are supposed to. If you... If you see somebody holding a rifle pointed at the former president of the United pointed States, pointed at him, he ducked. But his presence probably caused the shooter to rush, mm -hmm. causing him to shoot early. Right. Who knows? And maybe I don't know. I wasn't the there. What? That also might have saved the president. Yeah. But unfortunately, right. another person yeah, was Mr. killed. Yeah. Yes. yes. And we're praying for them and their yes. family. Coming up, President Biden gets a break from Democrats trying to boot him after the attempts on Trump's life. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.